right, Uncle Sam FM here, and this is episode nine of the Iron Manager series, and it is MLS Super Draft Day. But uh, before we you know, dive into that, I kind of wanted to look at the um, what I've done with the squad so far, right? So I, I what I the first thing I did was I made this list of who are my guys that are getting a little older that I need that need to move on soon. Who are the guys who are just simply not good enough, right? And I've already made some deals to get rid of some players. Um, Daniel Lovitz is gone. We'll look. I show you. I traded him away for a draft pick. wasn't even really that good of a draft pick, but I knew he was not in the long term plans. Uh, I also traded away Kofi Sarkodi. Uh, and I don't even know how to spell Sarkodi. Apparently. There we go. Uh, he traded him to St. Louis. Both are so there. Uh, Sarkodie will play in USL Championship. That's about his level. He's not really an MLS level player. He tried it there with Houston. Uh, just never did work out. Um, and then I also one guy who I've I arranged a transfer for, but is actually still on the uh, squad is Tanner Dietrich. <clears throat> um, not good enough. Never going to be good enough. So I transfer listed him and sold him on. Some other guys that I'm I'm kind of planning on moving. Oh, I did also get rid of Alan Wynn, I believe. I think I traded him away. Yeah, sent got uh, sent him to Sacramento. <clears throat> he's another player. He's he's pretty good. He's got apparently has some intangible qualities because <clears throat> he just made plays when I put him on the field. But I, he just he was not going to be MLS level. So moved him along so other guys i'm gonna try i'm trying to move uh taylor washington uh if i can't get rid of him trade him for somebody before the season begins he is just gonna be cut i might move him down to the two squad um tribbett is another player that i'm looking to to move on did i i might already have let's see uh i can't remember his first name now yeah, I guess I moved him in part of that deal with Alan Wynn. So, Tribbett, I moved him along. Um, Baji is another guy I'm not sold is going to be good enough for the team. Um, he's, you know, three-star potential, but I don't know that he's ever going to get there. So, I've, I don't know, I may not have listed him yet, but he's a guy that I'll probably try and trade away. He's also 27. Uh, that's right about the maximum age that I, you know, I've, I will have hoped to have been selling players by the time they hit that age. Um, Lancaster is another guy, just not good enough. Problem is nobody wants him. Uh, I've listed him, but he'll, I probably won't be able to get rid of him. And that should do it for players that are just not good enough. Now, we did the expansion draft, <clears throat> and I was able to bring in five players that I'm pretty excited about um, in the expansion draft. So one is Gedeon Zalalem. Zalalem uh, actually came out with Arsenal um, a few years ago. Uh, he's still very young, right? He's um, only 22. He, for whatever reason, didn't pan out at Arsenal. He's also bounced around MLS a little bit, but I think I can help him. I'm going to try and tutor him to get that determination up and hopefully get him to a place where he can contribute. Uh, I also brought in a winger, Josh Perez, uh, who is a young player. There he is. Uh, another player, I, right, he shows him as the three and maybe four star potential. I think I can, you know, help him to develop. He's uh, mentally, he's got some work to do. <laughs> so that'll be where we, we're gonna need to concentrate with him. I also brought in Cody Cropper. He's a goalkeeper. Uh, played in England, actually, for a while. Um, he is only 26. Uh, I don't I don't think he's ever going to be like a elite keeper, but he's probably going to be better than Joe Willis, and uh, he's kind of a placeholder. I have signed an academy goalkeeper, actually, um, who I... Where did I... Did they put him on the squad already? Um, but anyway, when the academy keeper come, joins the team, oh, let's go to transfers. Maybe he's in here. Yeah, uh, Gonzalez. Yeah, he joins in February. 
Um, this he's gonna be my long term guy, I think. But uh, for now, I need somebody that can man tend the nets, and Cody Cropper is gonna be the best option there. Uh, Hassani Dotson is another player. I, I'm kind of this might he might end up being the best player I get in the expansion draft. Very high determination, pretty good work rate. Um, vision's a little lacking. We'll get we'll we'll get that up. Decisions also, but he's he's going to be a good fullback option. Uh, and then uh, Calvillo, Eric Calvillo. Uh, yeah, he's a potential number ten. You can see he's got four star potential. He's only twenty two, so I got a pretty good group of uh, expansion draft players. So that leads me now um, to my next, I guess what I'm, um, I'm going to show you kind of my system, I guess. So let, give me just a second. I'm going to pull up my, the spreadsheet I use for when I'm assembling my MLS squad. Okay, so this is my, um, my worksheet, and we'll just slide it right here so you can also kind of see the squad the players um this is kind of what i use when i'm it's kind of rudimentary but for when i'm putting together my mls team let me get my face out of the way so um first of all one thing you gotta remember with mls there are 20 senior squad players and when with your senior squad you want these players the, they have to contribute you can't waste these spots they count against the salary cap Right, you only can spend so much money. I think it's like four point two four million, so your uh, per per year. So your your squad has to be um, well. Your your first twenty slots, they better be players that can contribute. Right, players that are playing and that are good. If you if you're wasting a squad spot, if you're wasting a senior squad spot on on a player, then that guy's just eating up salary cap room. And you, that's and he's wasting it. So, um, what I do is I, I set up these are the I have my list of twenty, right? And I look at my the guys who have a either a DP or a senior contract. These are the guys on the senior squad, um, and I make sure that they're guys who I feel comfortable with in in the league, right? And if not, I you're I don't even put you in this list. So, Baji is one that I'm. Mm, debating on <laughs> leaving on this or moving my plan is to move him but the, I can he would at least be somebody that I can pull off the bench if I need to but he'll be one of the first guys to go other than that what you see these are the guys who I I feel comfortable going into the league with now it could be that if I get somebody better then I'm going to move them off this list and they're either going down to the two squad or I'm just going to waive them um, and down here, 21 through 30, these are players that do not count against the cap. And uh, the, well, the, the SMS players, senior minimum salary. If, if I don't fill all of these spots, then these senior minimum salary guys are going to fill them, right? So Josh Perez will end up going in here and he'll start counting against the cap. But before I register, I, I want to, this gives me just like what I'm looking at, right? So I can fill one two three four five senior squad spots now i do it this way because if i'm not careful i'm going to end up with like 25 senior squad players and you can't do that you you can only have 20. um well you can right but then you're you're you have to you have to spread your salary cap thin or you have to start spending your general allocation money so i don't really want to do that so i'm trying to be efficient right so um so that gives me like what i'm looking at now on my list down here i've got perez uh he is somebody that i i'm pretty excited about this list down here these guys i can all put in and in some cases the, the guys on my uh, off budget roster which that's 21 through 30 are better than the guys i have on the budget roster so um yeah, I'm pretty, you know, that's that's good news going as we get ready to go into the draft. So uh, I do have, what did I say, six spots, six senior contract spots to fill. So um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at as I go into the draft. Now, first thing, let me just pull that out. Uh, I have trade offer. I actually have the number one spot. As a expansion team, they usually get the first 
two spots or ever how many expansion teams there are they get they get the first spots of the draft but i had as you can tell by the <laughs> the news here everybody wants that spot i don't really know why i've looked at the players and there's not any one player who's just whatever out of this world dominant but they for i've got half the league offered to be trades for that number one spot so i narrowed it down to the two offers because what i've decided is and we'll look, look at the trades here um it would just be kind of silly i think looking at the draft pool there's not one player that just jumps out you know there's not a future christian pulisic in this draft so it would be foolish of me to not get more than one draft pick right so and houston and real salt lake both came at me with first round picks and they offered me general allocation money so i'm gonna take one of those two offers um, and I, what I've landed on is the Real Salt Lake simply because I still get a draft pick this year and they were offering more general allocation money. So um, so I'm, I'm going to accept that pick, which means I'm not going to get the first draft pick. All right. Um, so I'll go ahead and click that. Trade offer accepted. And so that should have gone through. That's the first time I've ever actually accepted the fir uh, p an offer for the number one pick. I've never done that before, so I don't really know <laughs> it'd be something new for me um, now to look real quick at what I've done with the draft I've set up three pool like three um, tiers of draft players so when I go into the draft the uh, first thing I want to look is see is are any of these available right are any of these draft picks available and if they are then I'm gonna choose from among this group the guy that I want now, usually, I, I'm able to get my entire draft from this list because um, it's just, it's different. I value players differently than the AI does. So I, I, I look a lot at mentals. Um, I look at personality. Like, there are some personalities that I just, I don't draft. I'm not going to draft that guy. So, um, and obviously, attributes are, are important too, right? And my scout does give me attributes. But I start with personality. I also look at determination. Um, I don't like going below 14 on determination. But sometimes um, somebody has some attributes that I want. Like this striker had a 15 in finishing, 17 in flair, 14 in off the ball. Most of all of his other attributes kind of stood out to me. So I went ahead and added him to the to my top tier list. Then I've got a, a second tier list. Um, these are guys, you know, again, I look at personality. Um, sometimes things jump out like 20 in determination. There's three 20 determination guys on this list. So, uh, and then the third tier, same kind of deal. I'm, I'm looking at personality and, you know, attributes and so on. So with that said, let's look at the draft. Um, first pick now goes to Real Salt Lake. And they choose Diego Romero. Is he on one of my lists? Okay, he's not on one of my top three lists. Steven Jackson. I don't think he was on my list either. So this is what we do. I tell you what, I'm going to pause this and I'll come back on my pick. All right, so uh, we are now to my pick. I picked it 18th. And by the way, New England has absolutely scooped up almost every pick in this draft. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. They had six first-round picks. They still have so six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 first round picks <laughs> that's like half of the first round picks oh my goodness i thought there was a limit uh anyway <clears throat> so um it's now my selection and i've already kind of looked a little bit at at who got picked and and what i decided is that trading down was a brilliant move because the only we'll go to my scouting and my lists the only player who i um whatever <laughs> didn't want or actually wanted in my first group what that they that was drafted was this yendi lodis and i wouldn't want this guy because of how low his attributes are i'm i mean i put him on there obviously but it was mainly because of his 
Um, my scout rated him, you know, 74. Uh, and he does have some decent attributes, but it just, I mean, he, he honestly was the, probably the player at the bottom of my f- group of first, um, my first tier of players. So I, I, you know, no, that's no big loss for me, which means everybody that I wanted to start the draft is still alive. Um, I, I think what I'm going to end up going with is, is Peter McCarty. Um, I like his tackling and I'm, I need a central defender not crazy about his vision but my hope kind of is that I'll get him develop him well enough to where I can sell him on um, my scouts are really high it was a tough decision let's see if I can find yeah my scouts are really high on on this central defender um, Pablo Israel Rodriguez and you know now that I'm looking at him uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take him. <laughs> I'm going to take Rodriguez. I'm going to listen to my scouts. I'm going to trust my scouts. So we'll we'll pick this player from the draft. And let's go ahead and do the contract. Um, I, I want to try to get him on a reserve contract. Let's see if he... Link time, breakthrough, prospect. I'm not sure what all is. Sure, well, that sounds good. I'm not promising him too much, I guess. Yeah, he's a, he just wants to be a fringe player this year. See, he wants an SMS contract. I'm going to try to get him to accept a reserve deal. Reserve means that he will not count against the cap, but I'm only allowed so many um, so many non-salary cap off-budget roster players. Let's see. Let me pull up my... So right now I've got one, two, three. I've got three reserve players so i'm okay on that worst comes to worst those sms players will get bumped up so i'm gonna try and get him to accept the reserve um he may not accept it usually they do but let's see now he wants that sms contract okay so we'll just have to take that and live with it all right uh next pick will be i got the 31st pick so i'm gonna pause it until it's my pick again okay so we're at my pick again i had the 31st pick of the mls super draft and um i think and, and you know it's mccarty is still there i'm gonna i'm gonna keep testing the waters um to go to I guess whatever keep risking so I also looked at Tim Gross again kind of going just by what my scouts say and Tim Gross um, that 20 determination looks really good and he's also driven so I think I'm gonna draft Tim Gross um, and you look at his star rating it's pretty high man so is <laughs> this is the challenge of these drafts like uh, Jonathan Burke has a four star going into five so he and McCarty are are uh, look good, but um, Gross's determination, I feel like uh, that's that's gonna make his on field performances better. So I I'm, I'm gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna draft Tim Gross, pick player from the draft. I, I had a couple offers come in uh, for that draft pick, but they weren't good. And I, Colorado wanted it and. Philadelphia wanted it, but they were only offering me second round picks and some international slots. I'm right now. I'm not interested in international slots. Maybe in the future, um, but for this season, I'm not in continental play. I really don't see see the need to stockpile a bunch of international slots. So I'm not gonna. I'm just not interested. So um, we drafted Gross. Again, he's a fringe player. All that's pretty standard, I guess. Um, negotiate contract. He's good with the reserve, so we'll take that. And we'll go back to the draft. And I'll um, pause it until it comes to my pick. All right, first pick of the third round. And no offers come in for this pick. Um, but we'll look at my... Uh, uh, let's see. 
go to the scouting and we'll look at my short list. And for some reason, sometimes it doesn't pop my uh, scout ratings there. But Peter McCarty and Jeff Fernandez are both still available. It's kind of this, um, the game is like just throwing this in my face. Like I, it's, I, they, it knows I have this tough decision. So it keeps throwing these two players at me. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Fernandez only because his mentals are a little better. And like that four in vision, I'm dealing right now with Jack Maher, who had came when I first took the team, he had a one in vision and it's kind of a struggle to drag that up. And I like everybody on my team to have good vision. It's, you know, we're a passing possession team. And so that's, I feel like that's something that I need. So I'm going to, I'm going to draft Fernandez. Um, he also has a high finishing or not high finishing, high teamwork, um, high aggression, 15 determination. Um, so it's a tough call though. <laughs> this is, this is the, um, this is the game that I play with myself. Try and figure out what I want to, who I want to pick. Um, yeah, I take the draft pre. Yeah, here we go. Well, now my scouts are giving Fernandez a sixty-four. So, was somebody else who I was looking at? Maybe, maybe Fernandez wasn't the guy I was looking at. I don't even remember now. This is bad. I'm going to go with McCarty then. McCarty, even though he's that low vision, is frustrating. He's got, you know, four-star potential. Um, could be four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and draft him. I'm going to draft him. Don't overthink it. All right, so we'll offer his contract. He Once you get to this level in the draft, they're usually, it's always reserve. Yeah, they're, which again, is off-budget. Um, okay, I'm going to pause till my next pick. Okay, my pick. So let's see what we've got here. Scouting. Short list. Okay. So Peter McCarty, I drafted him. Still have all of the guys on my list here. Let me move from this. They didn't draft anybody else off the list. So this is a tough decision. Let me look at my spreadsheet here. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm showing that I need fullback would be good, but hmm. let me see if it'll go. Let's see if it'll finally pop. Now we're still not doing it. Let me. I don't know why it does that. If you know why it, my the scouting whatever rating doesn't come up, sometimes it'd be great if you could tell me. But Coronado was a guy I have pretty high on. That 19 determination looks good too. He can play striker, or I can train him to play in the 10. But a five vision, that's low. Ugh. Um. This midfielder, though, he could play. It looks like he could play a eight, play the eight position. Decent work rate could be better. It could be work rate needs to be higher, but a sixteen determination. And yeah, some of these are tough calls. Now I have one more pick, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the midfielder. <clears throat> Hame. Negotiations. He's okay with being an emergency backup, so obviously he's good with being a reserve. So let's just go ahead and skip to my next pick, see what I've got. And now, this time it's going to show the scat rating, and it didn't. <clears throat> okay, so they're all still there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Coronado with my last pick. Um, hello, Chan. Hmm. Chan looks good too, and I need a I need a wing back. And I could eventually trade him on the right. Let's see, decent passing. 
Positioning is okay. Decisions, 14 in decisions. Played at North Carolina. North Carolina is a good program. Fadika. Fadika's fast. They have a high free kick rating, too. He'd be a free kick specialist. I drafted him. If I don't like that five vision. Uh. <laughs> All right, let me just eyeball the mentals here. If we do that, though, I mean, Fernandez has the highest, probably. Coronado or Chan. So Coronado has higher mentals in three of the categories. Chan in four. Teamwork, decision, vision, and stamina. Stamina is another important one because of how much I press, and Coronado is pretty low on that. Uh, they're both international players, so they'll eat up an international slot, but I think I have 10, and I'm only at like 7 right now. So, <sighs> it's a tough call. You know what? I got... <sighs> I'm gonna take Chan. I'm gonna take Chan just just because I need a I need a fullback. And maybe Coronado will still be I'm gonna add him to my default short list. And maybe he'll still be available after the draft. So we'll negotiate that. Okay. So I mean, we'll just end the draft. Oh, yeah, it's already over. I was the last pick, I guess. Okay, that's the end of the draft. Um, next episode, uh, we'll do like a pre, kind of a um, whatever preseason episode to look ahead. Maybe we'll do one for that Columbus. We'll just do a live com for Columbus, but we'll go through the preseason. Uh, this is a look at my uh, preseason matches I have coming up. I'm going on tour to South America, to East South America, playing some pretty weak teams, but I'm, you know, it's really just about getting some fitness and all that. Um, then we've got the Suncoast Classic preseason tournament where we're playing Copenhagen from, uh, was that Denmark, I think? Pretty sure it's Denmark. Uh, yeah, Denmark. And then Galaxy and Enter Miami. Um, and hopefully we qualify for the championship match of the Suncoast Classic, but it's really just a preseason tournament, so no big deal few more friendlies before we begin the season against columbus so that'll be where we plan to do our live com i'll get to the preseason we'll look at the squad i'll show you what i did to sort of put it together so this is uncle sam fm signing off from iron manager <laughs> <laughs>